And, you know, one question we get a lot now from, from applicants is uh, go something like this, you know, I was interviewed and I wasn't interviewed. I, I submitted my primary, I submitted my secondary and I haven't heard anything. Should I send in a letter of intent? Do you, do you weigh letters of intent either before the interview or after the interview or if on a wait list? How do you view those? We actually don't accept any letters of intent at all or updates. Okay. okay. We, we take the application as we get it when it's complete with the supplemental and the CASPER. And then we get letters of intent, even though we don't consider them, we kindly thank them or discourage them from sending them. Because the reality is, is that if we got one from every single applicant in our pool, we would be overwhelmed with just reading these. And the other part of it is, we don't know what sort of advice that applicants are getting. So some applicants may be getting the instructions, oh, follow their directions, don't submit anything. And then some applicants may, you know, have connections or may submit those letters. And I don't feel comfortable giving those applicants necessarily a competitive advantage because they send something in supplemental when someone else may very well want to come here just as bad. Sure. It's interesting because the, the medical schools vary all over the map in terms of their attitude yeah. to those things. So, okay. And I don't know if there's a right way, but this is our philosophy that we've adopted. Okay. I think it's, as long as you're consistent with it. So if somebody sends one in, doesn't, doesn't get this memo and sends one in then you just ignore it. We, we thank them for it, but it, yeah. it doesn't go, um, it doesn't go to the admissions committee. It's not part of the decision either to accept them or not accept them or to um, have them come in off the alternate list. Okay.